What, you're sitting cross-legged? <laughs> <laughs> it's comfier. It's too tall. <laughs> all right. Is that okay? Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm jealous. I want to sit cross-legged. Sit cross-legged. No, I can't sit, but I can't fit cross-legged. Um, <laughs> welcome back, Sammy. Hi, it's, it's been, been a minute. A, yeah, it's been a little <laughs> while since you uh, joined for a video. How's yes. school? It's busy. I'm taking too many classes, but that's okay. It's good. Um, so what are you studying? I am doing a master's degree in speech language pathology to become a speech language pathologist. So you're learning like the actual school smart way of understanding sound. It's interesting because it's, yeah, I mean, if I was doing audiology, that would be even more so, but we are getting a lot of audiology. It's more of just like, it focuses more on the language, but the sound becomes really important in terms of like phonetics and auditory processing and all of that good stuff. So is your um, experience doing warp tours and having parents that do sound stuff? It's so helpful? helpful. I was in a speech and language or hearing science of speech and language last semester. And we were talking about all of this stuff. And it was like, I picked everything up because I'm like, oh, well, yeah, of course that happens. Oh, of course this is what's going on. And it was like, because I actually had real world applications and all of my cohort was like, what is happening? <laughs> So, yeah, it's been really helpful. It's been really cool. I, I think that it's really exciting to know, to be able to kind of bridge the gap in terms of the practical and theoretical in a really big way. Very cool. And, yeah, and, uh, yeah, for me, I'm, I don't have any sound knowledge from school, just learning in books. Yeah, so, um, I've literally, there's been so many times experience. where I, like, am learning in my textbook and I'm like, oh, that's how... Somebody else would explain what I, like, my dad has been talking to me about forever. Right, right, right. So you're getting the technical scholastic explanations of, like, the things. And, like, in the brain, too, because I'm in a neuroscience class this semester. So our, actually, like, a couple weeks ago, we just covered, like, all the ear stuff. And I'm also in an audiology course this semester. So we're talking about all of, like, the neuroscience and, like, physical, biological components of how we, like, understand and process sound while... I always just kind of got, well, how do you make something sound good growing up? And it's like they go hand in hand in a really interesting way. That's great. And for anybody who hasn't joined us before with uh, Sammy is my wonderful daughter. And um, yeah, took her out on tour. You did what? Rage Against the Machine tour with me <laughs> when you were little. I, I had little. two of you in a bunk. Yes. Back to back with your sister, your twin sister, Maddie, and then... Um, we would sleep in speaker cases. Yeah, I'd throw you in the road case lids, mix a show, you'd be up on my shoulders, we'd start the chili peppers and rock out, you had your earplugs in, and you'd bounce around, and then uh, I'd toss you in the road case um, after the song ends, set up the next song, and then pull you out of the case after the song started, and... Mix with our toes. Every once in a while, yeah, every <laughs> once in a while I would, then I'd come back down and look and... I'd go to pick you up, and that wouldn't happen. They'd be out. So. <laughs> um, we had I, some blankets in the bottom of the. Very capable of sleeping anywhere. And then when I went on tour with Warped, I would just be like out in the middle of those sets. Also, because I was. Very yeah, tired. you got to do a few warp tours, and you've been out with Pearl Jam a bunch with your mom, and um, the uh, yeah, you've had a lot of rock and roll and. Sound and now I'm getting a master's degree, so. Yeah, you got, actually got into some sound stuff. <laughs> so today. Um, you had a question about... Panning. So panning. I was, again, thinking about my neuroscience class. I, I think that I kind of just always assumed, oh yeah, panning, it's pretty simple. Left, right, we're good. And then we were learning about what actually happens in the brain to interpret panning and how it functions. And it's so much more technical than I realized in the brain level. And I was like, oh, I bet there's so much more going on when we're like doing panning in audio and I was like what it, what tell me about this I want to know about this all right well it's a great subject and I've been covering it a bit in um, other videos mm -hmm. and I've pro audio is really interesting because in studio stuff uh, there's quite a bit of stereo there's all kinds of tools that are used to create stereo impact different mics or double tracking playing twice um to decorrelate things or delaying one side, you can have level. There's all different ways to expand a signal in the horizontal field. And panning is basically based on 
um, the very simple concept of stereo where you have a mono input and you're sending it to one speaker or the other speaker or both speakers or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess there's panning versus our ears when something comes into one ear more than the other, which is a different perception is yeah. different than creation. Yeah. Than, so what we'll do, I set up a little demo thing today when you told me we wanted to talk about panning and we've got, I'm going to show you, we'll listen to both on headphones and we've got two speakers set up here on speaker stands um, or cases <laughs> um, that so we can listen to it in a room and we can compare the difference between some a pan signal in headphones which mm -hmm. would be very in, in extreme and then also coming more like what a PA would do. Yeah. Now panning is a controversial subject with live sound because if you truly pan something using a level pan and you put the level fully in one speaker and not in the other speaker, then all the people on this side of the room hear it and all and the no people one. on that side of the room don't. For large venues, that's an issue. For small venues, uh, if they're not that far away from both speakers, it's not that big of a deal. It can actually be pretty cool. And then when you're in a really small venue, you're probably getting a lot of stage sound anyways. Yes, and so. then you could reverse pan the guitar rigs over here, you pan the guitar and the PA over here, and you kind of That's make very it much what I did on Warped. Right, right. So yeah, you're, you're kind of filling that in. Um, I don't want to get too much into my issues with stereo, but if you do have something that's mono and you take and run into both speakers simultaneously, you have a summation point when you're equidistant mm -hmm. from the speakers. And when you move off to the side, you run into these interactions that are not optimum. Not um, optimum. Okay, so let's go ahead and I've got some, tra I've just got some, um, a, a some music here, different simple tracks that we can listen to. Let's go ahead and put on our headphones. And this is all being recorded on this recorder. Is that showing up there? Um, yes. Okay, great. All right, so I've got some drums and guitars, just real simple stuff that was um, AI generated. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to it in the headphones. And we're recording the recording, so you'll hear the same thing, the stereo track, everything we hear. Now, if you don't have headphones, you're just listening on the mono source, a lot of this won't work. So I recommend, if you really want to hear what we're doing, have a pair of headphones or don't and just put them on speakers or see how it works on whatever you've got. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this up as a mono source, showing up both equally in both ears. Now, the next one, what we'll do is we'll go into delay panning. So let's just go into level panning. So now, if I bring these up, now we can, I've got two faders here, but the equivalent of and that would be the most simple form of panning, turning the pan pot on a mixing board and sending it to one side or the other. And this is uh, pretty fly. much where my brain stopped. I was like, all right, cool. <clears throat> okay, I understand good. panning. Okay, so now let's look into Haas panning. And Haas panning is basically perceptual panning based on delay. And this is closer oh, for my understanding. Oh, sorry. Before I go ahead, let's go ahead and do this and take your headphones off. And let's put this in the speakers. Now we'll do the same thing. It's drastic. No. But you can still hear it. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and do delay in the headphones. And this is the thing that kind of made me really start thinking about it is because, uh, from my understanding, from my basic neuroscience course, this is a lot closer to what's happening in our auditory you know, processing. Great. Okay, so yeah, so it's. So I'm going to bring it up equally in both ears. Now, why don't you turn that delay knob right there? Exactly the same volume. Oh, as that's both ears. crazy. Now yep. what we'll do is I'll mute one side, mute the other side. <laughs> that's so amazing. it's exactly the same volume. Yeah. 
but it sounds like it's coming through there. Now, watch what happens if we turn down. We pan against this. So we take oh, the okay. one that yeah. sounds louder and turn it down. And try and recenter it. Yeah. And turn oh, it up the other way. So now it sounds in similar volume. Oh, that's trippy. So. Okay, so now let's do that with same thing. That's in headphones. Let's go ahead and go to speakers and do that. compared to, or it's not, it's not as drastic. It's yeah. there, you can hear it. And we have to use much longer time. Yeah. Now 3.3 milliseconds. So now if I go along. Oh, but I bet you that when we're talking about it in a much bigger setting, it's not the same, maybe the same state, like, thing? Because these are farther apart, because it's so yeah. close to your ears, you're very sensitive to small mm -hmm. changes. With these farther apart, we have to invoke much bigger changes yeah. that have a difference. And, the beauty of it is the people that are close to these speakers hear it mm -hmm. and the people close to those speakers hear it and they don't mm -hmm. notice any difference and the people in the center can hear it shifted to one side yeah. so it's a way to kind of move the image over without denying one side or the wow. other yeah yeah that said you're very you're limited with your delay if you go too long you run into timing issues and yeah. we can go ahead and do that go ahead that's 30 milliseconds. Now it sounds very stereo here. Yeah. Right? But watch what happens if I go really long. Oh. That's no good. Right, so now <laughs> it's, that's 147 milliseconds. Yeah. You can go ahead and mess with that. That's longer. Yeah. Trying to get it to the point where we can kind of just start. It still sounds funky. Okay, now it's getting, yeah, 30 milliseconds is, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so that's Haas panning mm -hmm. and using delay. And the, the advantage of it is you're able to pan things, yeah. things around and create images but it's very dependent on where people sta mm -hmm. sit are standing and you're limited in the amount you, need you can do. you need to hear both for you it need, to kind yeah, of... Yeah, you got to kind of be centered. Like, it's going to kind of be mono if you're near one speaker and not the other. Which is Which fine. is better than not hearing it at all. Level panning, yeah. But the people who are going to get the panning are going to be only the people who are hearing both. Okay, and that's going to be the effect of any of these pannings, okay. no matter what you do. If you're doing something to one speaker and different to the other, if you're not near both speakers, mm -hmm. you're never going to hear it, right? Um, so all of these are, are going to be selective. Okay, so now let's look at some other possibilities mm -hmm. here. We'll go back to headphones and turn those up. And this is, it's not really panning, but what we'll do here is we'll use EQ as a way to offset something. So what I'm going to do is put EQ on one side. Oops. And I'll put a different EQ on the other side. One side's bright, yeah, one and one side's, side's dull, and they're about the same volume. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it's coming more from the bright side. It does <laughs> sound not really pleasant. So we're able to kind of create a stereo image yeah. through EQ. Yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. now, finally, cool. let's do it to where we'll do a compressor. Wait, do we want to hear it in? Yes, that's okay. a great idea. So 
first we'll compare it to the mono. Okay. Yeah. Listen to one side. Yeah. And the other side. So then that kind of gets into also your con, like, which I, I can understand a lot of how, and I know you've done some videos on this, these ideas about double miking, right, can play into this. Yes. Um, of like, well, it's not going to be necessarily, it's going to be different on both sides, but it won't be bad on either. Yeah. And this was a bit extreme, but yeah. you can start to do it. And then what you can do, and then we'll do one more. We'll do compression and it's not really a compression panning. But what I'm going to do hmm. here is we're going to compress one side and not the other. Hmm. Okay. And then make up the gain level. So okay. that, yeah. and see what that sounds like. So let's go ahead and hit this. I'll compare that to um, the center. That's interesting. It sounds a lot. It's gotten wider. Yeah. But now, if we give this one to one, uh -huh. or the other. It sounds, yeah. So you don't really notice that it's being compressed. But it sounds bigger. It sounds so, it sounds more open. So let's try it with the speaker. So what's happening is we're compressing one side, but not yeah. the other. So it's level panning, but the level panning is constantly mm -hmm. changing. So it makes it because feel one's less. Loud, yeah, so one side's louder a bit, and then it compresses. The other mm -hmm. side gets louder. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Interesting. Of that one is everybody hears everything yeah one side hears a more compressed signal and unlike delay where it just moves it to one side or the yeah. other it's, it's constantly really moving. moving it's it's like constantly panning That's so it's crazy. a way of getting yeah. a, a, another level of thing um let's go ahead and i'm gonna run out of time on the, yeah. the camera um cool let's um we'll do a second video and we'll keep going on this subject cool awesome yeah uh, this is and really we'll exciting. listen to some other drum tracks and something um more uh, percussive and um thank you sammy okay sounds good okay